when it comes to like the celebrity divorces, I, I'm curious, how did you get get into that? Like, because now I guess you're you're known for it, but was that always the case? No, but back in the day, I was probably one of the younger family law practitioners because usually family law firms are smaller boutique firms. So it's kind of hard to get your foot in the door. So once I got my foot in the door here, um, then, you know, I went to school here at Beverly Hills High School. I knew a lot of people that had gone into the entertainment industry. So they were either managers or entertainment attorneys or agents, and they had clients that wanted to talk to somebody that maybe looked like them, sounded like them, didn't mind the tattoo or the multiple piercings. And so they would send in Laura Wasser to talk to whether it was a, a young pop star who's all of her agents really wanted her to have a prenuptial agreement or somebody that was going through you know, a, a custody situation and needed somebody to understand what clubs that they were going to or maybe didn't need to go to while they had kids. And so that was me. And that's how it kind of came to be. And then I think our success and our, I think, really discretion in terms of trying to keep things relatively out of the public eye as people are going through a, a difficult time has been really some of the secret to our success at this firm. Do you, just looking back, was there a particular client or a case that was really kind of the catalyst behind a lot of, a lot of this growth and kind of building this brand? No, I mean, there was like a cluster. I, I, I had done a lot of work for Stevie Wonder over the years with um, different uh, partners that he had and the children that he had. And even though those were completely sealed cases because paternity actions in California are sealed, we became close. And I think just at that time, the people he knew, the people he referred, I think a lot of it really was word of mouth. We don't do any advertising at the firm. And so I think that was helpful. And then there were things that got picked up by the media you know, when I represented Brittany or Christina Aguilera, some of those earlier cases, you know, did get some media pickup. But like I said, we really do try to keep it quiet. But for the fact that family law filings in California are public, we try not to get any of the other details of what's going on in those cases into the public eye. Which is which is fascinating because I've read that you don't like that these filings are public. In fact, you don't believe that they should be public. That's true. And I've gone head to head with some of the news organizations in terms of, you know, weighing the interests. I understand the argument that keeping things public keeps judicial officers from giving preferential treatment or anything else. I have enough faith in our judicial officers that I don't think they're going to give anyone preferential treatment, whether they're private or public. And I do think that people have a right. I mean, you know, now we finish a divorce judgment and it says the address of the family, the custody schedule of their kids, the amount of support one party is paying the other every month, every car and piece of art that they receive, that's all available in the public realm. There's something about that that doesn't strike me as particularly equitable, even though these people have opted for a public lifestyle, they should be able to keep some of this stuff private. So we figured out a few loopholes and ways of doing that. But for the most part, for enforcement purposes, they are public. And, you know, that gives some great fodder for news organizations.